finally, is that going to tell me that I have a 1, 0, 0, 1 and just be done with it? That's going to give me a 2 minus 5t times e to the, oh, I'm getting too sloppy. Is that a negative 3t? And then a negative 5 e to the negative 3t? And, and is that okay? So is that our u bar prime? Yeah, that's my u bar prime. So may I? I'm sorry, you guys. I meant to start this morning. You guys, I do think I have to use integration by parts. I will allow u to be e to the m, e to the m. Just a t. Yeah, how about just a t because of the reduction of order technique? And I think d and e is going to be everything else. But that means d is d. And v is going to be negative one third, e to the negative three t. And so I think this becomes a negative five times the product of u and v. So is that going to be a positive five thirds uh, t e? minus a negative 5 times the interval of my u dv, that would be a negative 1 third. Um, is, that a, is that a e to the negative 3 t dt? So I guess at the end, what I really have is a positive 5 thirds times t, e to the negative 3 t. And then I get a, an extra. Second term of hold it, I lost track of my signs. Um, is that going to give me a positive 5 ninths? E to the negative 3 t. Oh, but I think my second row, shoot, that's just going to be a piece of cake. That's just a negative 5 thirds. E to the negative 3 t. <coughs> oh, I didn't even realize I got some common terms to combine. And my common terms to combine are going to be the first and the third. But you guys, that gives me, uh, is that a negative one ninth? E to the negative three thirds, plus five thirds t. Times e to that power. 
And then finally, a negative factor is kind of stuff. Oh, but shoot, you guys, just merely gave me what u bar t looks like. I still have not come up with a particular solution. Can I erase my song? So to come up with that particular solution, I will take a peek at what my x of p bar looks like. And I think, as a function of t, it's merely going to look like my fundamental matrix times this beast over here, which is my u bar t. It's just that when it comes to the fundamental matrix, oh shoot, where is the darn thing? It's way over there. That's going to give you one. A three and a eight, one plus three. Oh, you factored out the. Uh, yeah, do you mind if I factor out the before t? As a matter of fact, for my u bar to make my life a little more simplistic, I'm factoring out the negative three t. That's going to give you negative one minus plus five thirds t and a negative five thirds. You guys, what am I missing? You the four t. That was just a single. I think you guys have safe multiplication is defined as a two by two is a two by one. So the resultant product range is going to be a two by one. So dotting the first row, the first with the single column, the second, I think that gives me a negative one minus plus five thirds t. Um, minus five thirds t. Oh, isn't that pretty? Not intentional. Uh, well, actually. And if I take a peek at the second row uh, dotted with the first column, I think that means I'm going to have more or need more. I think that's going to give me, um, is that a negative one-third plus five t? Is that a plus five-thirds minus five t? Oh, shoot, you guys, it's clean up time. And then cleaning up, I guess that leaves me with nothing. Negative one ninth and um, you said four thirds. Period. Oh, you know what, you guys? I made another mistake. I, I forgot my D of T. I really did not. Well, there's my particular solution. And so I think all solutions to the DVE are going to be in the form of some of my confirmation solution with this one particular solution. And so I think. All solutions are going to be on this form. Uh, actually, let me go back. Where's my... S oh, there it is. Third board over. That's going to be C113. C113. Plus C2T. <coughs> Negative 1 plus 3. All times this particular exponential factor. Oh, plus a particular solution I just found, which is negative one ninth, comma four thirds. U of t. I think that's what all my solutions are for. You guys, I know it looks like a long process, but we're just putting smaller pieces together. That's not bad, is it? No. If you do a three by three. That's fine. <laughs> or five by five. <laughs> but you guys, before I erase it, I just want you to attack me on this. Oh, here, you're going to attack me on this. Watch. With my purple pen. Remember, you guys caught me on a sign error. From here to here, multiply both sides by negative one. That changed. And we did change it over Because someone caught me. Nobody has any questions. Mike? I was curious uh, what the steps were to go from the oven and like what like how you got from the first one to the second. Now I've got to confess, when I went to the from the first to the second, I was not using my typical algorithmic technique of gastro elimination. I was simply trying to uh, reduce a matrix, an augmented matrix, in whatever efficient manner I could without doing a lot of arithmetic. So I chose not to multiply both sides by e to the 4t. I chose to recognize that I multiply this by 3 to get this, but I multiply this term by 3 to get this component of the second term. And 
so I chose to keep everything as is and multiply the first row by negative three to get the second just to reduce all the arithmetic. So I have to confess I took liberties as opposed to using my algorithmic technique. But at this stage of the game, we're finishing the semester. I hope I can do that. Yes, Chris. This is a really general question. So if somebody has a question about this problem, they should have to borrow it. Um, in getting B2, B2 bar, um, what happens if you, if the B2 bar you get is the same as, uh, if, you, if it uh, becomes zero, becomes zero? That means I chose the wrong choice for B3 bar. Okay. Do you remember how it happened in the homework that you showed me? Remember I had to finagle with the S and T off run? I do it in such a way that it made sense. Well, that was a little bit different. That didn't generate the zero factor. I'm just saying, even with a zero factor, I can choose it in such a way. Okay, yeah. so as long as it doesn't equal to the zero bar, you're good. I should be able to speak with good thoughts. I'll change color. I feel bad at doing this. Um, I typically say V3 bar is something like this. So I get this. And so I have more freedom in choosing what that second is. Is that a is. G? Yes. All right. Man, you were just on me. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry, last class. Okay. <laughs> In front of everybody. That was all because uh, well, Katie started it. Catherine started it, did she really? Well, she was the one that initially had the problem with the row. Yeah, she scored the test. I'll have to run that. <laughs> anyway, it allows you sometimes just to at least avoid fractions of nothing else. But in the end, you will be able to generate more of this non zero problem. That won't be Well, if it did happen, it means there was an arithmetic error. Partial differentiation, or partial derivative. But is that analogous to the jumping to the next dimension, or is that simply something that's more common? I think in a strange way it is analogous in the sense that you, you've got two different components, two different, different independent variables for, for your function x. So yeah. class two right there. Uh, oh, it'll typically be referred to as partial differential equations. That'll be the typical type of the course. So you usually take that as a math major, or maybe a, a hardcore physics major, like junior, senior year, or maybe as a graduate. So do you guys think I could try try to fit it one more example? Yeah. Just try. I'm gonna cheat. I'm gonna look at the exercise set. I wanna see if he's got some three by threes I can use. Oh by the way you guys, I should have said this. This technique I'm using over the overall technique for finding that particular solution is called my variation of parameters technique for V. Yeah, it does. It's just bigger. Well, it does a little bit, doesn't it? Because yeah. um, x of p is equal to a u times something, just like it was with the variation parameters technique of these. And the actual system, the equation I solved involved u prime or u bar prime, just like it involved u prime with variation parameters. Why are those two techniques called that? Like, what are the parameters that you're varying? I always just view this because the, the u1 and u2 are varying with the ones and y twos with the old one. And I think this is kind of analogous to that. To me, it's like what, varying the u one and u twos. I think. It's kind of like a way to average. Plus, you're looking at the rates of change in place. So. I think that's how I was thinking about it. So, everybody, I am going to be a thief. I'm going to go into exercise section 7.6, and I'm going to steal an even exercise so they don't rob from the uh, homework set. I will take a peek at example number eight. So allow me. Is he going to start over here? By the way, I thought my example was really nice. 
My example is a really nice exam question because not only do we solve a non-homogeneous VDE, but the underlying homogeneous VDE had a defective matrix. So keep that in mind for the final exam. Speaking of exams, um, would you be able to maybe post another exam for online? Because I didn't really get anything out of the last one. It, there was only like one problem that's even relevant to us. Nothing on the third exam. Yeah. No, I don't think so. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's all applause. Yeah. You guys, while I'm doing this, do you guys mind checking the sideboards to see if you can find a piece of black metal? Nobody wants to. There's ones over there. They're all easy. No? Who is worth a shot? That looks fine. There's a purple one. Purple's yeah. nice. Purple's close to black. I heard that. Oh, so that one is purple. So that gives me a three by three. So, well, a three by three coefficient matrix, I should say. And I maintain the first thing I'm going to do is take a peek at the homogeneous case. And in the homogeneous case, I'm simply going to reversal for eigenvalues. Expansion I get, if I expand about the, um, the um, obviously the third row, row is simply going to give me a lambda minus three. Is that going to be multiplied by a lambda plus one and a lambda plus four, or minus four, excuse me? Is that going to be a plus four? I've got a lambda minus 3 times a lambda squared minus 3 lambda. Uh, is that a minus 4 plus? Oh, jeepers. That's nice. So lambda is going to be equal to 0, or lambda is going to be equal to 3. Now, if I try to find the corresponding eigenvectors. Wait a second. Yes, I'll wait. Is it is 0 as a Not necessarily. Yes. When you uh, did the determinant and the bottom row, right? So we have uh, an eigenvalue between a lambda source of 1. Yeah. That's negative 1 minus lambda, right? I know. Chris, I typically do this because if I switch signs to this one and this one, it's negative times negative is positive. Okay. I was consistent. I rewrote it as 4 minus lambda is lambda minus 4, which is deleted. Okay. I've got a negative 1 factor. But negative 1 minus lambda becomes 1 plus lambda if I pull out another negative one. Okay. And the negative 1 times the negative 1 is positive 1. So it really is legal. Okay. And I know I pulled a fast one here as well. That should be a 3 minus lambda. I just knew I had 0 on the other side, so my head had multiplied both sides by negative 1. Okay. So that too I think is legal. Well, let's check it. I think if lambda is equal to 0, I think I missed something. You missed something? And if lambda is equal to 0, this is what the corresponding augmented matrix system looks like. Is that a negative 1, negative 2, 2, mm -hmm. 2, 4, negative 1, 0, 0, 3, augmented with this. I just maintain what that's going to give me is nothing more than um, a trivial solution. No. No. Never mind. Well, it doesn't have trivial. Is something easy I can do? I don't see. I got an idea. Can I multiply the third row by negative one? Add it to the second. Negative 
So I clearly see the second row drops out completely. You mean the third? The second. Because the second is just a duplicate. Oh, 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 oh. I mean the third. Because the second is just a duplicate of the first. So you said the first multiplied by the third. Or the third. I multiply the third by negative one out of the second to use the results of my new second number. Just so you can clearly see the second row multiplied by the first. And I think that reduces to this system. Is that a one, two, negative two? And then a zero, zero, one, zero, and then an all zeros. Or shall I say one, two, zero, 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 one, zero. But I think that gives me an eigenvector. I'll call it D with bar. Should be nothing more than that. Anybody want to help? One, negative two, one, negative Say it again. It's such a nice pen. <laughs> negative two, one. One, I'll just use different summaries. And so I think my x1 bar t is simply going to be, is that just going to be a constant factor? Because I get my two negative, excuse me, I said two negative one zero points. Times my e to the lambda t, but that's just e to zero, which is just. Now, I maintain that if I'm going to look for a second solution, I better go to the second eigenvalue. And with the second eigenvalue, it's going to be positive 3. Let's see if we generate I think that gives me the system. Hold it, hold it. I can't make C. So if I subtract 3 on the main diagonal, I'm giving me a negative 4, negative 2, 2. A 2, 1, negative 1, and then a 0, 0, 0. Ah, oh, shoot, you guys. Doesn't that reduce down? Guys, I'm just too tired. I can't do it. That first row just simply says 2v1 plus v2 minus v3 is equal to 0. And so if v3 is equal to t and v2 is equal to s, doesn't that be v1 is equal to, uh, is that a negative 1 half s plus 1 half t? And so I think my v2 bar. Not choosing one of them, but a collection of B2 bars. And if a collection could be represented this way. Um, how about S times this? Is that a negative one half? S, or excuse me, negative one half, one and zero. Plus T times, uh, is that going to be a positive one half, zero, positive one? Again, you guys, I'm tired. I've been seeing mistakes. I can I change it one last time? Can I think of this as um, maybe an uh, m times 1, negative 1, 0, plus an n times 1, 0, 2? Uh-oh, I can't hold it. That should be negative 2. You guys be honest. Is that OK? Can I, I, I was just putting fractions watch. I replaced this S with a, a negative 2 times M. Yeah. It brought the negative 2 in just so I can avoid fractions. That's all I did. I did something similar with the So that's the thing you're the last thing you said about the last one? Yes, I agree. Oh, by the way, shoot, something else horribly awful with this, you guys. I'm already using T as my independent variable. Can I put a like a, a double bar above it? So you understand it's not the same T as the there as my independent variable. Just Well, then, that being the case, I think I've, I've got my x sub 2 bar t to be nothing more than, um, oh, sorry, still made another mistake. Look, there's something missing, what is it? 
E to lambda T. But again, over here, I'm going to have that factor. It's just over here, lambda T equal to zero. So it's just going to be equal to one. one. So keep that in mind. I didn't miss it over there in the end, in the long run. Over here, I think I've got my one, negative two, zero times. Yeah, I'm going to ask this. And I've got my x3 bar t being equal to my, instead of 1, 0, 2, e to the 3t. I did, and I have to confess, the reason why I put the M in here, the reason why I've got the M in here is because when I go to the non-homogeneous kick up, typically when I go to a defective matrix, a lot of times I want to use special numbers for M in to get something that makes sense. Now, I, I know I'm over-speaking because technically speaking, my matrix is not defective. But if it were, it's a habit I have to do that. And I just think I put the I think my complement solution is this. plus C2 times the second, which is one negative two. And need the three T. Plus my C3 times, is that a one, excuse me, negative one? No, it's not negative one. I think it's lost. It's positive one zero two. Times D to the three T. Chris, these solutions to I also maintain that my fundamental matrix is simply going to have column by column um, 2, negative 1, 0. E to the 3t, negative 2, e to the 3t, um, 0. And then finally, e to the 3t, 0 to 2, e. That's my fundamental matrix. Well, I guess I'm now ready to actually find my particular solution. So diving into the home in this case. Ooh, did I just speak? I meant to say my non homogeneous in this case. I think I have the following. That my particular solution is going to be created by taking a peek at the fundamental matrix times u bar. Where? It is the case that my u bar has a quality that might differentiate it. Multiply the left hand side by my fundamental matrix. I'm going to generate the v bar right back. Now I've got to take a peek over here real quick and identify um, what my v bar looks like and what my fundamental matrix looks like because I've got to make a decision what technique I'm going to use to solve the system. Well, we don't want to use Kramer's, right? We want to use Gaussian. I think, Brad, Ooh. you're right. Only because everything in here seems to be really nicely behaved. Yeah. So do you guys it might if I use Gaussian elimination? Yeah. Now, as I'm writing everything down, can I, can I skip the step or two? Can I, number one, interchange the first and second rows and multiply both sides of the new first row by negative one? And I think that gives me this system. So I've got a positive 1, positive 2 e to the 3t, a 0, and augmented with, is that a negative 4 e to the 3t? And then I've got my 2 e to the 3t. e to the 3t. Followed by a, 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 is that a negative e to the 3t? And lastly, I guess that gives me a, is that a 0, 0, 2, and then a 3? Only because I could. It was easy. Can you guys tell? 
difference by twos and by zeros. That's the two. And continuing to reduce, I'm being honest with you guys, I don't know what the best thing is. Let me just be standard. One, two, e to the three cube. Zero, negative four, e to the three cube. Is that going to give me a zero? A negative three e? A single one e? And then finally, is that going to be a seven e? you guys, I'm sorry. I tried to avoid fractions. It doesn't seem like I'm able to do it. I will keep my second row as is. But I'll multiply it by a positive two-thirds added to the first. I agree with them. So give me a zero, one, negative one third, and a negative seven thirds. And then a zero, zero, one, three thirds. You guys, I'm only one step away. One step away. My third row is there. Well, my second row is going to be a zero, one, zero, something, and I just got to think about the something. So positive one third times the third plus the second. He's going to give me a yikes of work. Is that going to give me a one half minus seven thirds? Seven negative 